Okay, in other news that everyone's broke, uh, no, not everyone's broke, uh, Brent Venables, Oklahoma, has uh, agreed to a new six-year contract, basically a two-year extension. He already had four to go. Uh, but new six-year contract has been approved, $51.6 million. He'll earn $8.6 annually for the duration of the deal. We are proactive about contracts, uh, Joe Castiglione said, the OU athletic director. Uh, he's 16 and 10 in two seasons uh, in Norman, which is obviously not typical uh, OU standard. However, they went 10 and three last year, uh, including winning the Red River. Uh, he signed three consecutive top 10 recruiting classes. They're heading into the SEC. Venables, I think we'll, we will see what he can do. But I, I mean, I don't have a problem with him getting a, a contract extension. Um, but it sort of sets up OU making a pretty clear statement right away. Hey, this is going to be our guy heading into the SEC. Um, they are going in with a brutal schedule. Uh, I think it is ranked by the College Football Network as the fourth hardest schedule in the country. Uh, the SEC did them no favors in in who they're playing. Uh, and uh, this is where we're at. What do you think of Oklahoma and Venables heading into this? It's really a historic and pivotal year. Uh, uh, Pat, what do you think of this? This seems like a pretty classic case of uh, a premature reward of a coach who's trending the right way, and he may end up being may end up being a great investment. But even ten and three is fine; it's good. But have we seen Oklahoma in the playoff in a while? No, no, we have not. And now it's going to be harder to win. Maybe not harder to get in the playoff, but harder to win. And so. If it works out, awesome. But if it doesn't, you've just given yourself a bigger buyout. And we know they there are plenty of big buyouts out there, and that never seems to stop anybody. But uh, I, I think I would have waited one more year to see the product Oklahoma puts on the field in the SEC before I just would have decided to mound up to this extent. But Joe Castiglione's been a very smart AD for a long time, and he's not, to me, he doesn't tend to be like financially reckless. Uh, so, you know, it it's could be one of those things in Joe, we trust if you're Oklahoma, but we'll see. Th this does strike me as like a, um, a contract boost solely off of, uh, uh, kind of for perception in recruiting, right. Going into the sec that that's what this feels like. like we're behind our, behind our guy as we move into the sec and we're going to show it publicly with this contract. And, you know, obviously the the salaries of coaches in the Big 12 in the SEC are very different. And we're going to probably see some of this from those former Pac-12 schools who moved in the Big 10, is salaries are going to rise to match the their new league. And I think this is also what's happened here. And there was a riot, I don't, I can't remember who tweeted it, but it was an Oklahoma beat writer who tweeted something to the effect of, you know, this is kind of normal procedure. You can't have an Oklahoma coach be ranked 10th in salary in his league. And of course, my reaction to that was, why not? But anyway, <laughs> yeah, right. that's here, there. Um, yeah. But but that's the, that's the sense I get. Like he was going to argue it, it that the, you can't have the Oklahoma beat writer get paid 10th. <laughs> right. Like, right. That's what I would go with. Well, look, I mean, I, I'm covering OU. I deserve third highest. We should have sports writing. We've just deals. We've we really <laughs> lost the with the coach and salary thing. We we just we really lost the the whole mantra of you got to earn it. Like I, <laughs> there's no yeah. earning it anymore. I, it's it's wild to me. And we thought and I still do think to a degree that this will slow. But, you know, Cases like this make you kind of scratch your head a little bit. Well, and especially after going to Destin and hearing all the talk, you know, I always cost containment, cost containment, oh, yeah. cost containment. Yeah. Oh, well, except for this See you one. In Naples at the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I mean, the money is just, these are just numbers at this point. But yeah, I, 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 my guess is you do this to, I, I, I mean, okay, they start, they host Temple. Then they have um, Houston and Tulane. 
And uh, I said it right, right? Did I say Tulane correct? Yeah, they got. Tim- I said Tulane correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby. Yeah, yeah, Give me a. T- where's my yeah. six year deal? Give you a raise and extension, huh? <laughs> Tulane on the first hit. Houston and Tulane. Tricky. Tricky. Okay. Yes. Hey, look, if you're paying the guy this much money and you're the OU Sooners at three straight top 10 recruiting classes, I'm not sure that's the measure anymore, but whatever. Uh, you should win these games. But Houston and Tulane are not easy. Both teams very, very good. Then you get Tennessee. They're coming for the big uh, welcome to the SEC moment. Going to be a big time game. Really interesting game. They're at Auburn. Then they get Red River. Then South Carolina at Ole Miss. The main Black Bears, second in reference in this pod. Pretty good for big day up in Orono. You main Orono. Uh, then they're at Missouri, Alabama, at LSU to finish. And I feel like this extension is a little like Listen, we know this is going to be a tough s- schedule. You going to make the playoff off that schedule? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But he's our guy. And it sort of takes that. Because, like, you're looking at Billy Napier. Everyone's like, ah, oh, he could be cooked. He could be this or that. And maybe he is. Down in Florida, they have a super hard schedule. It's almost like you sit there and say, hey, look, we know the schedule's going to be hard. Now, he's a little different. Napier's. Are they both going in their third year? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I guess you what that Red that. River victory last year paid off for Brent Venables. I don't know. Uh, I just said Castiglione's a very good AD, and this is their move. I don't. Know. They got the money, I guess, but um, it, it. I think it just takes the speculation out if this kind of goes sideways. I don't really expect it to go sideways. I'm, I'm fascinated. I mean, how good do you think Oklahoma's going to be in the SEC? Like they consistently I, have been as good as any program like ever, but. Yeah. This is different. Is is this? Can they do this? I don't. I don't a hundred percent know. I don't either. And I mean, I don't think we will know until we see. And I think you will need a special coach to be able to succeed and win at a really high level in the SEC. You know, the level where Oklahoma is accustomed to. And I'm not talking like the Bud Wilkinson level. That was something or Barry Switzer, but. Can you win as much as Bob Stoops, who won a lot and did win a national title? I don't know. I, I think it's very much TBD, and they they kind of got, you know, pulled along in the prop wash of uh, Texas in making this move, and it's one of those where it kind of like UCLA pulled along in USC's prop wash. Be careful what you're getting into, because it's going to be much more difficult there.